Guys, you have to do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, 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 oh. Do it. Hi. Welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace, and today we are going to be talking about this feedback, or kind of like my own feedback for the event Eye of the Storm. For you guys who don't know or have not seen, they've actually tweeted out this survey, and this survey is asking a lot of the right questions. Essentially, what they're asking for is feedback on the current event as well as the game itself. So as you can see, we've got it separated into the event and what exactly we like about it, as well as what could be improved about it. Now this is actually really good because this gives us the opportunity to tell them which parts we like and which parts we don't like. After that, what's even more impressive is that they actually have this guy over here, which is feedback about the banner itself. And I've seen a lot of your comments and I agree with a lot of it. And like, well, this is the opportunity to tell them. And last of all, we've got the improvements generally for Alchemy Stars. And so like, there are so many things that come to mind, but like, I'm going to go through each of these and actually give my thoughts because I want to kind of like jog your memory about like what you could potentially talk about in case we miss out on anything. And if I do miss out on anything, then please drop it down in the comments below and I would really appreciate it. It will just really help foster discussion and I really think that this is like, I think this is going to be a great game. I just freaking love this game so much and I love that they're actually asking for feedback. And so hopefully with all of this, as well as their like 16 million in sales in the first month, Alchemy Stars will hopefully do better over time and like maybe we'll get an awesome game in the long run. Not like those crappy gachas that people drop and the population drops to like below 1k within like three weeks. All right, so with that being said, let's jump into the game itself and let's start off with the first piece of feedback, which is what do you like about our current event, Eye of the Storm? All right, so we are in the game. Let me just hop into Eye of the Storm. And as you can see, I've got to open up here. And so I want to first talk about the store. The store is always something that's really interesting to talk about. And so if I open this bad boy up, you can see I've started clearing it out. I wanted to say that the store items themselves is actually really good because they put a lot of like high priority items into it, in particular, the Star Crest. But not only that, they actually make us a welfare unit as well as the full soul ambers for it. I know it is a copy and paste from Arknights, but it is a real positive and I want to encourage them on that. Just because one game has done it doesn't mean that it wasn't inspired from another one. For you guys who didn't know, Arknights actually was also inspired by a lot of other games, but it's just that Arknights like popularized it all because it actually grew really big. So yeah, just in regards to this, I think the favorite part about the store is actually the essential materials over here. The fact that we are actually getting selectors here and we're also getting like some nice ones that are kind of relevant to the event. I'm a massive fan of this and I guess that's kind of it for this one. Second of all, I want to praise this guy over here. And so this is just the event stage. I just love like the entire story. Everything that they've done here is like so awesome. I'm also a fan of these special stages back over here, like where they're a little bit more of a challenge for like the average player. Hopefully by the end of the event, everyone is able to finish it. But like for me, I actually struggled a little bit and sometimes making me sweat is like kind of good. On the topic of difficulty, I personally thought that the difficulty of the normal events was appropriate. I really think that like going up to A240 or so, or even A140, I think this is actually really, really nice. It lets a lot of the newer players grind up to this point and let let them make use of like these drops as well as these nuts over here. And them kind of backloading the difficulty into these ones is kind of nice. Having the event duration up here is also really good because like for me, Arknights, like it's just like always at the bottom. I never freaking remember. However, it is like sticking right there and I always glance at it every day and I'm like, okay, I got to get it done in 11 days. All right, well, that being said, I want to talk about the story itself. And there is just like a lot of production value in each of these. Although there is no voice acting, there is just like so much going on. The live 2D, the scenery, like there are actually a lot of like custom painted images, I think, for this one. The characterization, all the visuals, all the live 2D, all of it is just so incredible. I freaking love it so much. It's actually very rare that a game is able to make me care about its game or like its world building as well as its characters. Like I've mentioned before, like the very few games that have made me feel this way is probably like Genshin. And I don't know, it all just feels really right. Like this doesn't feel like a deviation from like the main story. Instead of feeling like a side story, it feels like one of the many stories in an overarching plot. Obviously, there is a downside of people not being able to play this and then like you know they kind of miss out on some like smaller plot however eventually there probably is going to hopefully be like an event compendium where you're able to like replay all of these but that's probably like a year or two down the line so let's not get ahead of ourselves i don't know about you guys but like for me personally i thought like mixing in these guys over here these like cutscenes, i really like that it just made it really feel like a story because you had a cutscene and you play through a little bit and then you had a cutscene and then you like play through a little bit more and then even then the stages themselves also had cutscenes. so for a lot of gacha games you usually feel like the game is like 80% and the story is like 20%. For this one, I really felt like it was 50-50 and I was playing through a story. It was really nice. Okay, I think that's all I have about these quest guys over here. So I want to talk about the sign-in event as well as the desert bounty. Sign-in event is okay. Like it's giving like the nuts and stuff. However, like 5k is kind of inconsequential. Whereas you look at some of the other ones, like this is like 60 stamina straight up. So that feels really, really nice. 500 bolts also feels kind of nice. And if this is the blue one, nope, it's a green one. It's just that some of these secondary rewards kind of feel like a 
little bit lackluster. And it's like, as an end user or as a player, I log in, I get my daily event and I'm like, oh, that's it. Obviously it's being accompanied by a third of a pull or like technically three refreshes or like you can use it however you want. I think the amount of gemmies is okay. It's not like spectacular, it's just okay. All right, closing that one off, let's lastly talk about this guy, which is the quests. Remember guys that we are still focusing on the positives of the events here. So for me, the positives is this guy over here. I quite like this meter. And the positive for me here is that like all of these rewards are really chill, but not only that, like you actually kind of can select the quests that you want to do. I'm a massive fan of the daily system that they've actually implemented into this game. And this is kind of reminiscent of that where like, oh, of the 42 quests, you only have to do 40 of them. However, as you guys already know, there's about to be some massive criticism on that because like a lot of these quests are actually like, oh, you have to ascend a character that you pulled from freaking. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Praise that I'm trying to give here is that like, they are actually kind of giving us options as to how to complete this meter. And so this would be like a perfect system if this was like, oh, you only need 40 of these like little sensor things to finish the whole quest line. And so to achieve like these 40 certificates, we're going to give you like 45 quests over here. And so you can choose 40 out of these 45. I think that is really awesome. Like the system is there. It's just like the way that they implemented it is, is no, no. Okay. I think that wraps up all of the positive things about the event itself. All in all, I'd say it's quite good, but there are a lot of improvements to be made. And so that being said, let's start talking about them and let's go back right back into the quests. Let's just seeing this makes me like, kind of like, Oh God, just after playing through it, like these few days and just seeing this pop up like every single day and like realizing that I won't be able to do it. That just sucks, man. It really sucks. And I know there are a lot of people in the community or like in the comments that are like, oh man, just ignore it or whatever. But a lot of you are like the hardcore gacha players who are like, oh man, this is just how it works in the gacha industry. The fact of the matter is, is that like every time anyone logs in, they see this and they can't do it. And especially because it's tied to like a premium kind of content, it just feels really freaking bad, right? I am not saying that you guys should not be able to reward somebody who pulls Eve with an extra star flat, but maybe put this quest like literally anywhere else, right? Maybe you could potentially attach it to a banner or something and it's like oh man on this banner if you actually get eve we'll give you a star flare just don't put it into this which is like where all of the main events and quests actually sit it just really makes people mad and i said i was chill about it but like over these few days i just look at it and i remember back to my like my crappy pulls and then i'm like <sighs> All right, I think my rant for that one is done. So let me have a look at the store, see if there's anything over here. To be honest, I think the store is really well balanced. I, I don't know if there is any like criticism that I could give here. The store itself is probably one of the strongest positives in the event. Actually, I forgot to add this on like to the pros, but like the store, you can actually complete it as a completely free to play player just using all of the natural stamina. And honestly, that is massive. And so like, I would say the store and the system around it, like to clear it with all of these like currencies, it's all good. All right, so let's find something else to trash talk because there are a couple more things. And so I see this guy over here, N8 and N7. This is actually going to be slightly controversial. All right, I'm going to slap on this boy here and you're going to see we are only getting T2 materials over here. Maybe I have been spoiled by Arknights, maybe. But typically speaking, it feels bad because it feels like I'm grinding the event for this currency and not these drops. I know that these currencies are then used to like, you know, buy more T3 or T4 mats or like other materials and stuff like that. But I was personally really hoping that they would allow us to kind of grind out like some essential materials. And I know there are some here, but I meant like higher tier. There are a lot of people that are really angry about it. And there are a lot of people that are kind of like, man, suck it up. For me personally, I'm kind of in the in-between. I'm feeling, and this is not by calculations because I'm just looking at all the materials that are coming in, but I'm feeling like it's actually coming in at a pretty nice pace. This part is more to remind you guys to like include what you think about it. I personally think this is okay. Actually, you know what? I would love it if this would actually also drop like the T1 materials. There is actually no efficient way of grinding T1 materials in the game right now. So aside from like coming back to potentially N3 or N4, you've got like this guy over here. And honestly, being forced to grind this one versus N8 or N7 feels really freaking bad. So that's just something to think about. I don't have like a particular solution in mind, but yeah, that's my criticism and probably a criticism for the game generally. I wish that we could farm these a little bit more effectively. Okay, I think that's actually kind of it for like the criticisms for the event itself. Honestly, again, guys, like I don't go back on my assessment before. I do think that this event is an 8.5 out of 10. I really do like it. It. Again, I wasn't expecting anything innovative and I think this was generally like just really solid. Okay, and so the next bit of feedback is going to be about the Red Tempest banner. Oh my God, here we go. This one, ah, oh, Salt City. It's Salt City over here, my dudes. I talked about it before and I was like, I'm pretty chill about this banner. I think now I'm not really that chill about it anymore. Honestly, I'm kind of mad because like just seeing this banner every freaking day just keeps like giving me PTSD. This banner is like cringe. It's so cringe, okay? Why couldn't it just
just be like the Colleen and the Uriel banner. But just rolling on this banner, it's just such a crappy experience, right? I've seen on the Discord, some people are getting three senses and no Eves and they want Eve. And then you've also got the vice versa. And the worst thing about all of this is, is that you cannot guarantee either of them. You can't guarantee anyone on here. You can't guarantee like anyone on here. And I suspect we won't be able to guarantee anyone ever. That is a massive piece of feedback like on this banner, but like on banners generally, you need a way to guarantee a character. I'm pretty sure there are case studies on like gachas that don't have these systems in place. Monkey Gate, guys, look it up. It is a GBF, a Grand Blue Fantasy scandal. Everyone thinks that Grand Blue Fantasy or like Psy Games was always like really generous and stuff. That is not true, actually. Five years ago, a GBF player actually spent 6k unlocking one character. And this was before like sparks or guarantees or pities or whatever were kind of implemented. The fact that the same thing can actually happen here is kind of like ultra cringe, guys. Yes, to a dog, I know you are in the business of making money, but like I don't think that is really the way. You really don't want that experience of people potentially going like 12 senses and one eve. Even Genshin has freaking put a cap on their weapon banner, although it is 270 rolls, which is an insane amount of money. At least they've actually got that stopgap, and I don't see that anywhere here. Arknight still doesn't have it, and I will flame them every day for it, although it is still a really freaking good game. Although on their limited banner, they do have it. But please don't get any ideas. Please don't do limited banners. As for the characters themselves, I think the character designs and their characterizations, I think, are quite good. Unfortunately, we have not seen enough of Eve. Like, we do know that she is like this cute, mute, like, kind of amnesiac girl. Hopefully, in part two, we will learn a little bit more about her, but we have seen a lot from Sinsa, and honestly, like, he's a really cool dude. From a gameplay perspective, I think Sinsa and Eve both bring pretty cool mechanics to the game. We've got Sinsa bringing in, like, defense down, as well as, like, this massive fan AoE, and we've got Eve doing some, like, weird sniper stuff, even though she's a detonator. Actually, on that point, that's probably, like, a criticism. Why does Eve act like a sniper when she's, like, apparently a detonator? Like, look at that. Deal 50% damage 25 times to the nearest enemies. That sounds like Vice 2.0, not like a detonator. I don't know about you guys, but, like, my understanding of detonators is that they do big AoE damage. This doesn't sound like AoE damage to me. This sounds like a lot of freaking damage a lot of times on one single target. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I think that's it for like the criticism for the banners and these two characters. I keep freaking scrolling away. I'm so sorry. And so let's start talking about the improvements to the game itself. Again, before we go on, I want to keep saying like, I freaking love this game right now. If this game keeps going strong, I would like continue to make content for it like until it dies. There is nothing like it on the market, but alas, there is always criticism. So like, let's start talking about it. The first thing and the most important thing for me is like the 30 FPS or 60 FPS lock. This is incredible. Like Uriel, incredible. However, seeing her in 60 FPS would be way more incredible. Just the whole UI, the designs and stuff, they're all okay. They're, it's fine. It's definitely possible. To be honest, it's a little bit better than possible. I quite like it. But navigating in between the UIs just feels so freaking clunky. It always feels like I'm a snail and I'm just kind of like trudging along, right? Or like I'm a grandpa and I'm moving between like point A and point B. But point A to point B is like two meters away and you're like taking three hours to get there. Like just look at this. Like it feels like there is like stutters or like micro lags. And like if this was like silky smooth, like oh my god, I'd be like mm -hmm. like seriously clicking into this, it just like feels like really janky. And like yeah, if you guys could imagine this at double the FPS, oh my god, this I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop talking about it now. So my second piece of criticism I've kind of already touched on, and it's that I wish like those T1 mats were just farmable. So I'm talking about like those chunky crystals, like those vials or potions or whatever. Let me just like find one for you guys. I'm sure episode one is gonna have a few. So if I click onto one three, we're gonna have a look at nope, it's not there. Okay, let me try another one. So how about one eight? Okay, nope, one eight doesn't have it either. Oh my god, what what am I doing? One seven? Okay, you know what? Let's go into just episode two. Okay. Um all right, two two. Here we are. It's these guys here. Somehow I think it's actually easier to get T2 or T3 materials as opposed to these guys over here. And yes, I know it says that I own a lot, but the only reason I have a lot is because I've never used these ones. For the teams that I'm actually building out, so I'm talking about the water and fire, I am so starved for these guys. I think it would be really nice if you could add some of these to like the harder stages because farming like lower tier stages just feels incredibly bad. I think I will step back with the solution and just kind of like reiterate the problem and it's that I'm not getting enough of these. If Tour Dog, you guys could like figure out a solution to that, then I'd be really happy. Secret Territory. All right. So if you guys remember my review of Secret Territory, I kind of gave it like a 10 out of 10 and it's kind of a little bit preemptive. I think 10 out of 10 was a little too generous. I think a 9.5 out of 10 will suffice because honestly, I love this freaking game mode and the store itself. Like it is all like really well designed. The one little thing that I think could be improved by this is I think this needs to be able to be ordered. The fact of the matter is, is that 
this is actually exceptionally time consuming. I think that it should be auto-able and maybe it's going to consume more MS, something like that. And so therefore, if it consumes more MS, it means that we get less text fragments, but that's kind of the trade-off we do for like for the auto mode. It is a price I'm willing to pay, especially because like I'm an end game player. And the appeal of gadgets in this game for me is like, no, not spending copious amounts of time on it. All right, next, let's move on to the Spire. Oh my God, I actually hate the Spire so much. All right, as you can see, I don't think I've made a single bit of progress on the Spire. And that's because I'm freaking hard stuck at some of like the famous stages. Let me click into Molten Spire since that's where I've been the furthest. As you can see, I am so hard stuck on 60 and it's just like so freaking bad. Before 60, it was 43 and 42. Like, oh man, like I, I don't know how anyone does this without over leveling. It says the recommended Aurorian level is Ascend 2 level 33. I think you guys need to either nerf the bosses or change this recommendation. Changing the recommendation is going to be really freaking weird because like from 44 all the way to 60, it's actually so easy. But 43 itself is just like so freaking hard. I was only actually able to pass it after getting three A3 Aurorians. And that is a considerable amount of investment considering it's saying Ascend 2 level 33. I think you guys just need to revisit some of your stages. Like some of the early ones are just like so anti-fun. Like I think 13 or 14, I can't remember. Like even though I finished 43 and I had to do it the hard way, I'd be completely okay to like have a nerf on it. Just so like other players that are still climbing through the spire, they won't have to feel frustrated or like walled by this. 43, 60, 20, 20 is another one because 20 I think is identical, almost identical to 60. It should be like that wall thing. Yeah, oh my God, this gave me nightmares. I had to like over level this. I was just getting chunked way too hard. But yeah, that's kind of it for the spire. Like I think some floors just need a little bit of revisiting. Generally speaking, it's okay. I would give the spire maybe like a seven out of 10, but like those floors, they really were so frustrating. All right, so here's where the real criticism starts and it's the freaking linking account thing. I am actually so freaking mad that there is no way to kind of like unlink your accounts. And what I mean by that is that I've actually linked this account to like a line account because I used all of my accounts like for Twitter, for Facebook or whatever in the Robin event. However, what they didn't tell us was that when we made those accounts for that Robin event, it actually was used up. And because a tour dog account was already associated with those Twitter or Facebook accounts, like when we finished rerolling, we couldn't actually do the link. That just makes it so anti-reroll and I bet you like most of the people who actually did the Robin thing, they probably dropped their accounts. It's just so incredibly frustrating to not be able to log in through my main Twitters or my main Facebooks. On top of that, like I play on Android and on iOS. So as you can see, I am playing this on an Android emulator. However, my daily phone is an iPhone. And the fact that I can't link to like a Google account and switch between the two, like between this one and that one, that has been incredibly frustrating. But I think what's more frustrating is if I go back to it, it's just the ability to not be able to link this to my main Facebook. So annoying, so freaking annoying to be honest. Wow, I'm getting worked up. It's actually getting real hot in here, even though it's winter. Another piece of criticism, and it's not something that like annoys me incredibly, but like you see that gauge over here. For you guys who didn't know, this is actually gauging like your EXP progress to the next level. I need something a little bit more robust, like a number or something. Because if you're close to leveling, you can do like some level of calculations or preparation. You might overcap on stamina. You might do like this or that, right? Small piece of criticism, but I think it would really go a long way. All right, so this is a slightly controversial one. So for you guys who don't know, the dispatch system is kind of like based on who you've assigned out to the different rooms. And so you can see that to each of these rooms, you can see that like some characters are actually assigned to them. So for example, we see Miss Blanc there, Jola and Unimit. And so for example, Miss Blanc, Jola and Unimit, they actually cannot be assigned to dispatch. And from like a lore or a common sense point of view, it kind of makes sense. You know, like how can they go and dispatch when they're actually working in one of the buildings? However, in practice, this has just been incredibly annoying to be honest. I came across this like feature like very early on and I rationalized it to myself because it makes sense, right? But when I click into any of these and I'm like, oh, I can't use this character because they are over there. It's just really freaking frustrating, okay? Because what it means is that I actually have to go out and you guys already know how I feel about the menus. And then I got to go and like remove them from their room. So for example, I got to come over here, go to deployment. I got to remove Tessa. We've got to replace her with someone else. And then after that, I've got to do that for like another four characters that I've assigned out just to be able to use them in dispatch. And did I mention that the UI feels clunky as hell? And so yeah, whilst I understand the logic and accepted it for like a lot of the game, actually dealing with this has been such a pain in the ass. I really don't want to deal with this anymore. And I think it's actually kind of in line with your philosophy for the Colossus design. And what I mean by that is that you clearly want to make the Colossus like a pleasant experience. Not having like a stamina associated with your units and like having to rotate them out to like make them rest and stuff. I think that's the best idea that you guys could have implemented to the Colossus. And so this whole dispatch system, I think like goes against that. And so I really wish that you guys would consider like changing that a little bit. On the topic here, I guess a slight criticism and it doesn't matter too much to me, but it's this one over here. And I kind of wish that there was a little bit more predictability to it. So essentially what happens is that every day we get some units, they come in, they give us some like Lumamba or Nitium. I wish that it was kind of more defined because it feels bad 
when I hit a day, you got three people and they all give me Nitium, right? Maybe they both give you Lumember. Maybe one of them gives you Lumember and one of them gives you Nitium. Maybe like the friend one is 100% to be a Lumember, like something like that, some level of predictability. It just feels bad getting like Nitium, but like that's like really a minor piece of criticism. It doesn't really bother me, but I have seen a couple of people like complain about it. Okay, I think that was actually exceptionally comprehensive. I'm looking around and honestly, like everything else is really good. Guys, I know this video sounds like a massive rant or like a massive thrashing to the game. It really isn't because like all of these are like, I wouldn't say they're minor issues, but like I think they are really well warranted. And disregarding all of these issues or if they were able to manage to fix all of these issues, this game would be like so incredible. Again, like I said, and I really want to end this on a positive note because I really need to reinforce the idea that I do love this game. There is nothing like it on the market. A lot of the systems implemented are incredible. The pity system is awesome. There is so much live 2D and so much production value. The Colossus is awesome. The story is pretty decent. The characterization is really there. All the different selectors that they give us, the dispatch system is freaking awesome. There is so much that I love about this game, but there is also a lot that actually can be fixed. And so with that in mind, let's start wrapping up this video because I'm going to start losing my voice very soon. All right, guys, secret question. And I actually did pose this at the start of the video. If I missed out on any criticism, I want you guys to drop that down in the comments below because I do think that it is very important for us to be as comprehensive as possible. And so, yeah, if you guys can think of anything, please drop that in the comments below. On top of that, it would really mean a lot to me because it means that you've actually watched all the way to the end of the video. And so for that, thank you so much. Otherwise, if this video was kind of entertaining or like helped you a little bit, then please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow, a pin. You already know what it is. But otherwise, as Mickey Mouse once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.